Miller. Are we gone? All right. Well, welcome to Grace Church. Welcome to worship with us. For those of you joining us online, we're glad that you can uh, join us. Uh, we have to reset, reset a couple settings. So we're coming to you a few minutes late at the start of our service today. But we are so glad to be able to worship today. Um, many of us are, well, we're here we're wearing masks. Uh, glad to be able to worship. It's a very kind of exhausting time right now in our society and just the, this virus uh, uh, persisting, and so it's wonderful to be able to come here, even very carefully, so that we can uh, feed our souls and be together, either virtually or in person. And so I'm glad that you're here to worship with us this Father's Day. Uh, we are going to uh, begin our worship in just a moment with a gathering song to center us in prayer. If you're joining us online, we'd encourage you to download our worship guide uh, in the link so that you can follow our service easily, and also. Uh, Say hello, let us know you're there and watching with us, and we'd also love it if you would share the feed so that your friends can join us for worship as well. Uh, we'll begin with our gathering song, and then we'll invite you to stand for our procession. I want to look just like you. I want to sound just like you. stand and join us in our procession. Father, let your kingdom come.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray together, preparing our hearts for worship. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot, for she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. time of my trouble, I will call upon you. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you. For you will answer me. For you will answer me. Sing that with me. In the time For I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for, for to you, O Lord, lift, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. In the time of my trouble. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor nothing like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. In the time of my trouble
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus, let me be what you make of me while you be what I love. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, good morning again, friends, uh, and much patience to those who are trying to watch online as our system keeps spitting us off, but we will get a recording posted for you uh, this afternoon. And happy Father's Day to the dads out here today and those at home watching us as well. Uh, it's a uh, uh, beautiful, wonderful day to worship God together in this place and to celebrate uh, dads and father figures. On that note, I always get a kick out of the lectionary, like when things just line up so perfectly with the assigned readings and like the occasion of the day. Uh, so like on Mother's Day, so we've had a couple weird ones. Uh, and on Father's Day today, we hear uh, from the assigned text of the lectionary about fathers and sons being set against each other and mothers and daughters being divided. And, you know, clearly Jesus has a real passion for causing family conflict and drama. And, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's what I think about when I think about Jesus anyway. So, uh, you know, it's just it's great timing when that works out and lines up. Uh, th this summer, we're working our way through the middle chapters of Matthew's gospel, and one of the big themes of Matthew's gospel is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, as Matthew calls it. And so Jesus, we've already heard uh, uh, earlier in the year, preached this long sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, where he dis uh, kind of disrupted the conventional wisdom about how the world works. Uh, he taught about love and grace and forgiveness, and he called his disciples to live into this way of being, uh, to live as if thy kingdom had come on earth as in heaven, and to pray for that reality to be made more, even more known. Uh, so how does this stuff about, uh, about divided families tie in with that uh, love and mutuality of the kingdom? You know, what, what Jesus is actually talking about here is not so much about particular families, but he's trying to open us up to think about the whole human family in some different ways. Uh, underlying this passage about division that we read today is a theological truth that Jesus is, is trying to call people to, to realize and to recognize that we are all tied to one another. He wants to help people understand that despite our variety uh, of 
differences and our uniquenesses. Nothing actually separates any of us as children of God. We are all one. He's critiqued uh, over the last few chapters the religious and political authorities of his day for placing a heavy burden on the poor, for misunderstanding the heart of the law of Moses, and for generally not taking care of people or respecting people very well. And uh, preceding our chapters today, I mentioned last week about how Jesus has been going through the countryside healing people, particularly the outcasts of society, the lepers, the possessed, people, uh, the people that everyone thought were crazy or unclean or unworthy, and he's been healing them. And then he's been going to the fishermen, uh, people who, you know, they didn't make it into the, the discipleship classes uh, 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 of the famous rabbis. So they, they had resorted to fishing. Uh, these were laborers of the field, right? And he'd gone to them and said, you know what, you're good enough to be a disciple. And he called them to be his disciple. He went to tax collectors, people whom society saw as being in league with Rome, as being uh, in league with the occupiers. And he called them to follow him. Essentially, he's inviting all these different kinds of people into community, um, many of them back into society, back into the human family. But not everyone loved this new ministry and this work that Jesus was going about doing. He was upsetting the status quo, and he was upsetting everyone who really liked the status quo. You know, the types of people who said, well, you know, this is how things work in this town, Jesus. These people live over here, and these people live over here. Don't come in here messing up our status quo, Jesus. Uh, Eventually, these experts on righteousness and this, these experts on how communities should work, uh, they go so far as to say that Jesus is in league with Satan. Because clearly, he wasn't on their side and didn't agree with their opinions. And so, you know, that means he's with the devil. That's just basic human logic 101. You know, demonize your enemy and discredit them and make them easier to hate. Right? That's what people do. And so today in our passage, Jesus is warning his disciples that to follow him, like to really follow him and to be about this work of the kingdom, that means that some people will end up hating them. He starts out our reading today and he says, look, you don't have to be me. You don't even have to be me. If you're just like me, if you resemble me, some will hate you. They will malign those of my house, he says. But have no fear because God is in control and God loves you. God has counted all the hairs of your head. And nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. So this discipleship thing is kind of a mixed bag. Rejection, love of God. It's like, you get both. Uh, but essentially, what Jesus is asking of his disciples, and of us, is that they would dedicate their lives to the love and grace of the kingdom of God. That they would align their lives with God's dream for this renewed human family, renewed community where outcasts are brought back into the fold and where mutuality and respect and real peace are achieved and reclaimed. And this will cause division with powerful people. It will cause division even within families and households, Jesus says. But at least if you are working for this, you know that you are on the side of love. This is his consolation. He knows his ministry will cause discord, that his good news may not be good news for everyone, at least to their ears. But he also knows that it's only by pushing through some of the discomfort and the commotion that he's caused uh, uh, that we can get to the other side. And he knows that what's on the other side of that discomfort is worth it. Do not think for a moment, Jesus says, that I have come to bring a fake, surface-level, superficial peace to the earth. I've not come to bring that kind of peace, but a sword, he says. Jesus knows that trouble is brewing, and he knows that the status quo is being pushed. Trouble is coming. But this sword that Jesus swings is the love of the kingdom of God. In the gospel, Jesus never swings a sword to wound or kill. In the garden of Gethsemane, when the guards come to take Jesus, Peter picks up a sword and he cuts off a guard's ear. And what does Jesus say? Put down your sword. Jesus has no intention to swing a sword for violence. But his sword, the love of the kingdom of God, pierces through darkness and shines the light of truth. It cuts the status quo of injustice from the true peace of the kingdom. It divides pettiness and sin and division from the truth of our common humanity. 
Jesus is trying to bring the disciples and us into this deeper reality of God's family, God's kingdom, God's truth. This is what his sword brings. Now, we don't have to look far today in our own world to see that there's many things that continue to divide the human family. Economics, race, politics, ideology, even religion. Disagreements are okay, of course. Different opinions, this will happen. Different cultures and histories have to be honored. Different, uh, we're not all the same. We're not all identical. That's part of the beautiful diversity of the human family. But where there is difference, people often weaponize it to wound and demonize one another. And this was going on in Jesus' day, and it's going on in our own day. And this is what Jesus wants to cut down with a sword of love. Racism, homophobia, misogyny, malice, evil, abuse of any kind towards one another, violence. These are the things Jesus wants to cut out of our society and out of our lives. Because when we participate in these things, we are essentially rejecting the love and mutuality of the kingdom of God. And we are rejecting God's love for us and rejecting that divine image in the other. The Bible is full of these stories. It tells us that there's this truth about us, this dark truth. Cain and Abel, you know, Sarah and Hagar in our reading today, David and Bathsheba, uh, Jesus' crucifixion. The list could go on and on and indeed does to our own day. And at first glance, at least, this divisive language of Jesus about fathers and sons and mothers and daughters being divided, it's actually part of this much larger invitation of Jesus to a renewed vision for the human family. Because even if it means having some difficult conversations in families or pushing through some conflicts and discord in society, like Jesus is having to do with the scribes and the Pharisees, Jesus is trying to push us all to that deeper level of true peace and justice. Jesus, after all, prays at the end of his life that we all may be one as he and the Father are one. So far from dividing families, Jesus in our reading today actually wants to unite us in a new kind of family, a new kinship, a new family anchored in the love of the kingdom. Are you with me? One of my favorite authors uh, is a Jesuit named Greg Boyle, who's a Catholic priest in Los Angeles. And uh, he works primarily with gang members. Uh, and he has started this string of businesses called Homeboy Industries. That they've got like a bakery and a silkscreen shop and like 10 other things. And they help gang members and ex-convicts gain like good employment where they can work on sobriety, where they can work on, um, most importantly, discovering the divine goodness that is inside of them and that divine image inside of one another. So in these, uh, in these businesses where people are working and uh, uh, at Homeboy Industries, you'll find rival gang members that sit side by side joking with one another. People who used to shoot bullets now shoot text messages at one another. The kingdom of heaven is near, Jesus says. Father Greg says that in order to understand the kingdom of God, we've got to understand that kinship is interchangeable with the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is about helping us see the kinship of heaven, that we are all one. He puts it this way. No kinship, no peace. No kinship, no justice. If you work for kinship, the natural byproduct will be peace and justice because you cannot demonize people you know. And demonizing is always a lie. It is always an untruth. And the sooner we can get to that, the sooner we can say, oh, there really is no enemy. Father Greg, I think, helps us see what Jesus is trying to push us towards in our reading today. The kingdom is about kinship. The kingdom of God. And this passage is tough, though, friends. It's a tough passage. It cuts. And I think Jesus uh, is trying to challenge us to see how that sword of love might be cutting through some of our own hardness of heart. Some of our judgments, our presumptions about how the world works, our own participation in injustice. And what do we need to cut through in order to love more and love better? There's plenty of strife, plenty of division and judgment and mistrust in our society, more than enough to go around. Uh, there's some discord that we will need to push through in our country in order to get to real peace and real justice, especially around the issue of race. But it's got to be rooted in this ethos of the kingdom of God 
It must be rooted in love if it is to find true peace and justice. But beyond race, I mean, it's an election year. Things are going to be heating up. There's plenty of issues in our country right now, plenty of opinions to be had. And we can have disagreements even with one another within a church community, but they must be rooted in love, never demonizing. And we will, of course, have disagreements in our society and in our communities about how we'll solve the many issues that our country faces. But we must not demonize because this is not who we are as Christians. This lesson from Jesus has lots of practical implications, I think. Lots of ways to think about just how this works in our life, of us living into this kingdom of God. It's how to have hard conversations with friends, with family, with even strangers. It has implications for how we interact on social media as well as like in our actual neighborhood and with, in our workplaces and in real life. We can have hard conversations and we can do hard things, but we must do them in love and respect for the divine image in one another because Jesus wants to take us deeper into that kingdom of God where we are all family, all connected, all beloved. So in the craziness of our world, one thing I can say for certain is this, that we need a compassion so much larger than we currently have. If we are to find true peace and true justice in our nation and in our communities, we must live into thy kingdom come on earth as in heaven. We must reclaim that kingdom, that kinship of God. So this week, may Christ's sword of love pierce any hardness in your hearts and renew us for this work of compassion, of mercy, and justice. Amen. I invite you to stand with me, and each week we confess our faith in those ancient words of one of the creeds, and today we root ourselves in the Apostles' Creed, and we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord Jesus, you are the fullness of life, of holiness, and of joy. You came with good news that your kingdom is near. Draw us close to heaven as we pray on earth. Lord Jesus, you have blessed us with relationships, with people to share our lives. Each moment with family and friends is a gift from you. Help us spend that time wisely, loving and supporting one another. Help especially this congregation to live into authentic relationships and to center our heart on you so that we may fulfill your mission as disciples in the world. Lord Jesus, all our life and labor is a chance to serve and glorify you. From the mundane to the extraordinary, your spirit enlivens our sacramental lives. Bless our work from the office to the car, to the kitchen, to the field. May we put forth our best as an offering of love. Especially bless and guide the work of those who govern and hold authority in our nation and around the world. Help them to be lovers and doers of peace 
and justice for the welfare of every single person. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you created us in your image, and you recreate us day and night, calling us to live into the fullness of the life you have given us. May we remember to play and to create, to appreciate the beauty of your creation. May we not be overcome by the anxieties and issues of our world or our lives, but rather may we place our trust in you. We lift up to you the concerns of this community for Ron and his wife, Lisa. We remember those who have died and find their home in you. And we lift up James and ask you to comfort his sons, Jimmy and Jason. May we find rest and refreshment for our weary souls, a holy Sabbath in your presence. We rejoice in the many blessings of this life especially our fathers and those who have served as fathers for us. Send us forth as your disciples, formed by your love, with generous hearts for the needs of the world. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Your kingdom come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we have sinned against you in For the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. We invite you to give a socially distant, appropriate peace of the Lord. <laughs> peace, Christy. Peace, guy. Well, friends, uh, I, I, our, I know as you make your way, you go, please be seated. Uh, I know our, our live feed has spit in and out this morning. Um, all of our equipment is working really well. Uh, so if you're watching us online today, Cox Cable is the problem. We're trying to figure that out, okay? Because uh, uh, we, have, we have tweaked every single little thing that we possibly could. Uh, and so every week at 1057, it kicks us off. And so uh, I had them run a new cable line this week, but they're going to have to do more. Uh, so if anybody has a connection deep in the like IT department at Cox, please help me get in touch with them because <laughs> I need their top level person, okay? <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want the level one guy. So anyway, um, we're going to try to get that resolved uh, as fast as possible. Um, so back, back to our previously scheduled <laughs> <laughs> liturgy. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries that we can celebrate? <laughs> come on up. You, you can come to stand right up here, Aubrey. Okay, it's Aubrey's birthday this week. Do we have the birthday prayer? Do we see it? Awesome. Okay, let us pray for Aubrey today. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls, and in her heart, may your peace, which passes all understanding, 
abide all the days of her life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, Omri. And uh, for all the fathers and father figures out there, let us pray today. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all fathers and father figures in our lives who have encouraged, guided, and mentored us to this day. Bless all fathers in their care of children that they may be loving, wise, and tender guides for those you have placed in their care. And we also pray for those who have fallen short as fathers, that they may find healing and forgiveness for them and for their children. Hold up each of us this day, for you are the true father and creator of all, and we give you thanks. Amen. Uh, friends, just a couple, I mean, one major announcement, I guess. Uh, there's, it's kind of a slow period in the life of Grace Church. A lot of our summer fellowship and stuff has gotten canceled because of COVID. A lot of our events, all that. So uh, the one thing that, we are, uh, that we're going to start doing is a little patio hangout on Sunday nights. Since today's Father's Day, we did a little trial run last night, and a couple of us sat out on the patio and enjoyed some fellowship. So about between 6.30 and 7 until about 8.30 or 9, next Sunday, the 28th, we'll be gathered out there, and we're going to try to make that like a Sunday thing so that people can kind of gather, bring your own lawn chair, any refreshments you want, and we'll spread out to be properly social distanced, but uh, just a good time to be able to reconnect with uh, your church family, to meet some new people as we continue to have new people in the life of the church, and so uh, uh, we just are hungry for that connection and those authentic relationships that we have not been able to do. And so, uh, you know, while we're kind of monitoring COVID numbers, you know, we're asking people to be responsible, to wear masks here, like in worship, to spread out and to honor these things that we know can help keep us safe. So, um, uh, so we'd invite you to come and participate in that. Uh, our, our, some of our outreach ministries will continue in July, of course. You can follow all of our news uh, by subscribing to our e-news, graceyukon.org slash e-news to sign up. Uh, and if, uh, uh, if you're new to Grace Church, you can go to graceyukon.org slash new here and fill out a little form to give us uh, some contact information so that we can be in touch with you and help you get to know us better and us get to know you. So we look forward to doing that if you're joining us online or in person, uh, wh whatever it may be, um, so that we can be in touch with you. And then lastly, we um, will have communion in a moment. We're doing bread only right now. We'll file you down to one line. We'll ask you to uh, use hand sanitizer on your way up and continue wearing your mask. And I'll put on my mask as I'm distributing bread just to keep things as safe as possible. Uh, if you... Uh, uh, if God has put it on your heart to give financially to support the ministry of the church, you can drop something in the offering basket or give online, graceyukon.org slash giving. So now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. We've been through the wild, through desert and our low. We've been through the night led by pillars of flame. We've stood on the banks of that wide Jordan River and heard, come all believers, come wash and be clean. Because your water's the way to my redemption, into your kingdom, your heart, oh God, most high. Blood is the power that breaks off my shackles, ends all my battles. I find rest in you, most high. We've laid down our nets, left our mothers and fathers, spoke in tongues of angels beneath tongues of flame. Baptized on the banks of that wide Jordan River Where you called all believers, come wash and be clean Cause your water's the way To my redemption Into your kingdom, in your heart, oh God most high off my shackles and all my battles I find rest in you most high 
in the water, wait in the water, children wait in the water, cause God's gonna trouble the water. Please stand. Glory be to the Father, glory be to the Son, glory be to the Spirit, three in one. As it was in the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature. 
to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to them and said, Take and eat this, all of you. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Friends, this is the table of Jesus, and the bread and wine is made ready. It is for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come. Because it is Jesus who invites you. And it is God's will that those who wish would meet him here. You may now be seated. And if you are joining us online and from home and not able to receive communion right now, we'll put up this prayer for you to join with us. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at this altar, we offer you praise and thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And together we'll say, we believe that you are truly present in the holy sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all our heart, soul, and mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life, until by your grace we come to your gracious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. God, you know my heart is divided, and my lips have worshipped many idols. You seem so far, while I need you to be close. And my doubts are at war with what I used to know. But for me, it is good to be near you. I have made the sovereign God my refuge. I will tell of all that you've done for me, how you cleansed and set me free. It is good to be near you. It is good to
friends. And let us pray together in thanksgiving for all the many blessings of this life and especially uh, this sacrament that we share. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, friends, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Let's hear the good, good news.
Let us go out into the world to love and serve God and neighbor.